Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Monday's over, and we're in the thick of the week. I praise God for another day. I thank Him each day for the opportunity to enjoy His creation, His blessings, His favor, His love. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Church of God of Prophecy Daily Bible Study. Uh, my name is Dexter Jones. I'm here studying the Bible, and I've decided to share my study online. And the purpose that I share this lesson is to encourage others to study the Word of God and seek God, because that's His will for us, that we know Him and that we know his ways so that we might not sin against him. This week's lesson is titled People of Hope. And this uh, unit uh, theme is letters from Peter and Jude. And so yesterday um, we started off uh, section one and uh, we talked about uh, our sheer salvation and people that are chosen and hope built uh, from First Peter verses one through four, and we'll continue today uh, with section one B, shielded and purified, First uh, Peter one verses five to nine, and saved by grace, First Peter one verses ten through twelve. But before we start, let's give thanks and honor to our Father. Dear God in heaven, we come to you this morning thankful, thankful that all that you do is focused on your love of your creation. All that you do is focused on truth and righteousness and justice. I'm thankful, dear God, that I can trust you. I can trust your decision making more than my own because you know all and you see all. And I just pray, dear God, that that small part of you that you placed in me be in charge of my soul. That I follow you and agree with you on all that you do. Help us, Lord, to know you more intimately so that we may not sin against you and we may live in agreement with you so that we may enjoy the benefits of your truth and your blessing. Thank you, Father, for this lesson. I pray that it encourages others to study your word and to seek you. Thank you in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, the Holy One. Amen. Okay. Let's get started. <clears throat> Section 1B, shielded and purified. 1 Peter 1, verses 5 through 9. And they read, Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein Ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes it, though it be tried with fire, might be found 
unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, and whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Wow, what an encouraging passage. So encouraging. This faith that we live through Jesus Christ and the temptations that purify us because we stand firm in our faith of who God is and who his son is and the payment that was made for our souls. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Okay, here's the official commentary. Just as God has given us a lively hope through the resurrection, he has also promised to keep us by his power. The word kept is a present participle that connotes, canonotes, canonotes, yuck, the ongoing keeping quality of God. The word was used in the sense of a protective garrison watching over the city gates from the inside. Thus, faith keeps us in the power of God until the return of Jesus Christ. Because we were saved at the moment we put our faith in Christ and because we are being saved daily through the indwelling Holy Spirit, we know we will be saved after we leave this life. Heaven will be our eternal home. In verse 6, the, if need be, should be remembered. Not all Christians at all times undergo major stresses on their faith. However, when onslaughts come your way, be mindful of God's promises. In the midst of temptations, your faith can grow. The trial of your faith refers to the genuineness of your faith, which is more valuable than gold. Nothing earthly compares with the value of saving faith in Christ. Our faith should elicit praise to God. This praise is the admiration of a coming monarch. The appearing of Jesus Christ in whom we have joy unspeakable and full of glory. While Peter was able to see Jesus in his early ministry, we are part 
of that multitude of faith who have not yet seen him, but nevertheless believe. Faith in Jesus leads us to a point in divine human history. The day of ultimate salvation. Okay, um, there's an excerpt here uh, by Andrew Murray, and it's titled, By God's Appointment. And it reads, First, he brought me here. It is by his will I am in this difficult place. In that fact, I will rest. Next, he will keep me here in his love and give me grace to behave as his child. Then he will make the trial a blessing, teaching me the lessons he intends me to learn and working in me the grace he means to bestow. Last, in his good time, he can bring me out again. How and when he knows. Let me say, I am here by God's appointment in his keeping under his training for his time and that's by Andrew Murray very well put that is completely focused on God okay our next section, 1C, is titled, Saved by Grace. The references are 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 through 12. And those verses read, Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied, of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Wow. And the commentary reads, the Old Testament prophets searched diligently to understand salvation in Christ. To them, however, the prophecies concerning Christ were a mystery. The prophets knew they would not see Christ in their generation. But they still had faith in him. For us today, 
with the complete canon of Scripture, the many fulfilled Old Testament prophecies and the discoveries of archaeology at our disposal, believing in Jesus Christ should not be difficult. When Peter spoke of the glory that followed Jesus' suffering, he greatly encouraged the believers to whom he wrote. Although they were suffering persecution and trials, they could be assured that glory and blessing would follow. In verse 12, Peter again says the Old Testament prophets did not minister to their own generation about Christ. The things they saw and recorded were for our benefit. The truths which have been handed down to us through the preaching of the apostles are the revelations of the gospel. Peter relates effective preaching with the Holy Spirit. That was his own experience as seen in Acts 2 and 3. Peter said even the angels seek to look into the mysteries of the gospel. While the angels cannot experience redemption, they marvel at the power of God to redeem sinful people and look in wonder at this, at this mighty salvation. Hallelujah. We are saved by the grace of God. The prophets of old foretold our salvation in Jesus Christ. They didn't understand it. They didn't fully understand who Christ was. But they believed in him. And as the commentary says, the prophets knew they would not see Christ, but they still had faith in him. And their prophecies were for us today so that we might know Jesus more intimately. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am at a point where I'm going to stop and I will pick up tomorrow, uh, starting in section two, which is titled Holy Calling. 2A is obedient children. Um, 2B is holy walk. And 2C is precious blood. So uh, tomorrow we will continue our study. Um, I thank you for your attention. I thank you for... Um, giving me an opportunity to share what I'm learning with you. And I pray that above all, you are encouraged to study the word of God for yourself. Thank you and have a wonderful day.